growing tomatoes from seed in containers, from start to finish. There is a lot to know about growing tomatoes, and I'm gonna to try to cover as much as possible in this video. First off, is it a fruit or a vegetable? The answer is yes. Tomatoes are fruits, botanically speaking, berries. But in culinary terms, they're categorized as vegetables. Even in the taxation bracket, they're taxed as vegetables through import or export rather than fruits. So the answer is yes. Tomatoes are a warm weather vegetable. However, there's two points that you want to keep in consideration when selecting a time and place to plant your tomatoes. 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius may be too hot for many varieties to fully produce their pigment. While 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius is too cold for the fruit to fully ripen. So it is best to choose the type of tomato and the variety you wish to grow based on your particular location. There are so many different varieties from cherry tomatoes to romas to beef steaks and pretty much everything in between. However, there are two main differences between all tomato varieties that you wanna keep in mind when selecting what container to grow your tomatoes in. Determinate or bush style tomato plants are a type of plant that grows to its full height and then produces its fruit all at once and then dies off. These tend to be more compact in size and are best grown in five to 10 gallon pots. Indeterminate or climbing plants tend to grow and grow and grow until the conditions are no longer suitable. These will produce fruit throughout their lifespan and because of their increasing growing habit, they will need a larger container to start off with 10 to 20 gallons is perfect. To extend your growing season, start your seeds indoors six to eight weeks prior to your last frost date, or you can direct sow two weeks after your last frost date. Today I'm gonna to be using this seed starting mix as my mix to start my seedlings. However, you can make your own by mixing a 50-50% of coca core and peat moss. You also wanna add a good handful of vermiculite or perlite as that's gonna help not only with water retention, but drainage. Ideally, you're looking for a light, airy mixture of soil that is going to drain well, as this is important to get your seedlings their best start. To start, I have selected a container that is taller than it is wide. It doesn't necessarily have to be this large, but you want something taller than wide so that way you can continue to build up the soil. And I'm gonna show you why in just a second. So I'm gonna start by filling a third of the way of my container with my soil mixture, like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pre-moisten this before I add my seeds. If you have a really light and airy mixture like I do, you might wanna try a squirt bottle to moisten your soil as the fine mist will get in there without disturbing your soil too much. And I'm just gonna stick my finger in there cause I don't care if I get dirty. And I'm mixing it around, making sure that the moisture is evenly absorbed. I think I need a little more squirt. You don't want your soil to be sopping wet, but you do want it to be uniformly moist. All right, now that my soil is prepped, I'm ready to add my seeds. Today, I'm going to be using some grape tomatoes from Johnny's, and I'm gonna go ahead and put two seeds in this one container. As you can see, they are very small seeds, and a trick about planting your seeds is you only need to put them in the ground roughly about the size of them. So because these are so tiny, I don't have to push them into the soil too far. I'm gonna to try to space them kind of diagonal there and then lightly tap them down with my finger and then make sure that the soil covers them just a little bit. And now that I have them planted, I'm gonna get my friend the squirt bottle out again and lightly spray on top. This is going to compact my soil so that any air pockets close around over my uh, seeds so that way they will have the most possibility of germinating. This is another method of seed starting, and this is new for me for tomatoes. I've used this a lot for peppers and chilies, and it works really well. And I did my Google Foo research and found that it should work on tomatoes as well. So this is a Roma variety from Baker's Creek, and let's see how they did. Oh, already, I can tell they did pretty good. When you're peeling the paper towel, you wanna to be very careful that you don't break any of those fragile roots. Let me briefly talk about what I did here. 
I simply took a piece of paper towel, I moistened it with my, my friend the spray bottle, and then I placed some seeds. I made sure that they were spaced far enough apart that once they started growing roots, they weren't gonna grow into each other. And then I folded that paper in fourths. I sprayed it down again really good with the spray bottle. I put it in a zip top bag that I obviously labeled and then I sealed it most of the way and then I blew a little poof of air in there. And this creates a nice little greenhouse environment for your seeds to start. I placed this on top of our refrigerator because that keeps a nice constant heat level that the seeds really enjoy. So as you can see, I got a pretty good germination here. It looks like I planted one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm trying to, to match the seed pods because I think some of these seed holes over here actually belong to these plants. But it looks like at the, at the minimum, I got half germination, but I'm thinking it's more like I got two thirds, uh, three fourths germination rate. I'm pretty happy with that. So at this point, I can go ahead and plant these in dirt. Uh, I wanna be very careful and make sure that I get a good portion of the root in the dirt. And because these are tomatoes, even more than that. One more tip for seed starting, particularly if you're in a colder environment, and that is to utilize a heat mat. Adding heat to the soil that your seeds are in will promote germination and speed up germination time. However, once your seedlings do germinate, you want to remove both the heat mat and the humidity dome if you're using it, so that way the plants can continue to grow in a more natural environment. A word about tomatoes. See all these fine hairs on the plant? It's these hairs of why it is recommended for you to plant your tomatoes deep each time you repot them. The reason being, those hairs on the stem are each a place for new root growth. So each time you plant your plant deeper and you pack soil around it, all those hairs on that stem create new root growth, giving you a better root system for your plant, thus a stronger plant. It is also those hairs that gives you a third option for starting new tomato plants. Let's go to the compost bin and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we are next to my compost bin and this is an Everglades tomato that has kind of taken over. And I'm okay with that because it produces really well for me here in Florida and I can pretty much ignore it. Little tiny cherry tomatoes that are super sweet. But as you can see here, this little part that's growing out of the crook from the main stem and the offshoot, this little part here is what's known as a sucker. And that is going to grow into practically its own main stem and go crazy. And that's why the Everglades that I've neglected and just let go to town is going all over the place because it's outgrown all its suckers. So you can pinch off that sucker and if it's big enough, which this one obviously isn't, you can go ahead and plant that in soil in a container of your choice, and those little hairs are going to create new root growth right away. If you wanna give it an extra little nudge, quick give it a little dab in root hormone, and that is going to instigate that root growth and promote it to go even faster. And that is exactly what I have done with these startlings here. The clippings I took were roughly about that long, and I made sure to strip the bottom leaves off so that way I could deep plant the stem. And as you can see, they are already producing new leaves and are happy and growing. Regardless of what method you choose to start your seedlings, it's best to water them from the bottom. And the best way to do that is to place them in a tray. So here I have my potted plant in a tray. And this is just an upcycled tray that I think originally held a zucchini <laughs> that we got from the grocery store. And you simply just water the tray. You wanna make sure you have a good amount in your tray so that way uh, the holes in your planter can absorb that water. And your soil is going to soak up that water like a sponge and therefore the water will go to the roots and not the plant. So now we're back to our seedlings that we just planted today. I would want to bottom water feed them as well, but an another thing I can do is put a humidity dome over them. You can simply do this by putting some plastic wrap since we plant them so deeply, or you can get a commercial bought tray that comes complete with a dome. You just wanna make sure that you're either starting your seedlings in that tray if it's created for seed starting, 
or you want it to be tall enough that it'll be able to hold the container that you choose to plant in. A final tip about water feeding from the bottom is that once your plant has had time to absorb that water, you want to remove it from the tray and simply dump out the water. You don't want to keep it sitting in water so that it'll over soak. That may cause root rot. So once I've noticed that these seeds have sprouted, I'm gonna let them grow until they get a couple sets of leaves on them. Then I'm gonna pinch those lower leaves off and I'm going to continue to fill it with dirt. That way, as my plant grows, I'm going to extend the root surface area with those little friendly hairs that I showed you earlier that are on the stem. So these plants have been planted roughly two weeks ago. And as you can see, this one here has already started growing its true leaves. These initially uh, oblong, weird looking shaped leaves are the seed leaves. And then these true leaves are the leaves more indicative of what you would expect to see on a tomato plant. So at this point, it is ready to start fertilization. You don't wanna fertilize your seedlings until they at least get their first true leaves. So as you can see, I started these seedlings in one of my recycled paper origami seed starters and it worked just fine. At this point, I can go ahead and separate these if I wanted to save this guy, but he's not looking too strong. So I think I'm just gonna pinch him off and let him die and save all of this for this one that is obviously the strongest and that way I won't disrupt its root growth at all. Because I utilized the paper origami seed starter, I can plant this entire thing in a larger pot without disrupting the leaves at all, as this is biodegradable and the roots will just grow right through it. And not on fertilizing. You don't want to fertilize your seedlings, as I mentioned before. You want to wait till they at least grow their first set of true leaves. At that point, you want to fertilize every 10 days or two weeks, whatever works with your schedule. You don't want to over fertilize, and I'm gonna show you a trick that may limit your fertilization altogether. So once my plant gets mature enough that I can put it in its permanent home, I'm gonna choose the fullest size that I can based on the type of plant that I'm growing. So remember, if it's the indeterminate type, you want a 10 to 20 gallon like this one. If it's a determinate type, then you can have a five to 10 gallon pot. So let's say I was prepared to plant this plant in this pot. I would want to fill the bottom, roughly a third way full, with dirt. And that dirt is going to be compost enriched. I wanna make sure that my dirt is as healthy for my plant as possible with as many nutrients that my plant will thrive on. And this is really crucial when growing in containers. And I'm gonna add two more things because of the container growth. And one of the things I'm gonna add is gypsum. And this is going to add calcium to my soil, so that way I can prevent blossom end rot. If I was planting directly in the ground, there should be plenty of minerals, including calcium, so I wouldn't have to add that. But because I'm in a container, I wanna make sure that everything my plant needs to survive is in the pot with it. The next thing I want to add to make sure my tomatoes are long lived and healthy is magnesium. And for that, I'm going to use some Epsom salts. I only need a tablespoon or so, and I'm gonna make sure that I add both that and the gypsum and mix it thoroughly into my soil mixture before adding my plant. But wait, there's more. There's a third item that I'm not gonna mix into the dirt. I'm just gonna simply place it right at the base where I plant my tomato. And this is rock phosphate. It is a slow release, so that way I don't have to mix it as it will naturally release its nutrients to my plant right at the roots, and that's where I'm keeping it, right there in that spot. This is a lot of information, I know, but hang on, we're almost done. Another thing you wanna consider is light, and tomatoes need a lot of light. They need at least six hours of full direct sunlight. Eight might be preferable, but it depends on your area. Because you're growing in containers, containers can move. So if you track the way your sunlight reflects in your particular area, you can move your plant to make sure that it gets the maximum amount of sun. Another thing to consider is support, and tomatoes need a lot of it. You've probably seen these tomato cages at your local home improvement store, as they're very popular. However, they're only really useful for the determinate style of plant growth, as a bush this size is only gonna be that if it's a determinate plant. Indeterminates are going to outgrow these quickly. 
but these are still useful if you think outside of the box. The trick is to get two tomato cages. Go ahead and place the first one in your pot, then take the second one, invert it, <laughs> place it on top, and you're gonna secure this with either twist ties or zip ties or something that's going to last in whatever environment you're putting this in. In our hot Florida heat, we want something a little more substantial or it's gonna snap. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to add some support stakes to this so that the wind doesn't knock it around, damaging your plants. Another thing that I mentioned earlier, but I can't stress enough, is retaining the moisture level for your plant. Even at the mature stage, you wanna make sure that the soil is constantly moist. You don't wanna be sogging, but you don't wanna ever let it dry out. A good way to do this is by utilizing a drip irrigation system. If you have that system on a timer, you can pretty much set and forget and not worry about your tomato plant except to fertilize it. A good way to check if you're getting the right amount of moisture is with your finger. Taking a glance at the soil might not tell you as much information as your finger will. Simply stick your finger in the soil roughly to the second knuckle, and if the soil is still moist, then you know your plant is fine. If it's dry, like this one's a little bit dry, then you wanna go ahead and give it another good drink. It is crucial, regardless of how you plan on watering your plant, that you keep the moisture at the soil level and the root level and off of your plant, as this is gonna help keep pests at bay. Another way to help with retention of moisture is to choose the right type of pot. Terracotta pots, though very pretty, are very porous and easily allow moisture to evaporate. Also, if you add a nice layer of mulch on top of your soil, this is going to keep the moisture in the soil and limit evaporation. It's also going to limit the transference of soil-borne pathogens when you water as it won't spray back up onto your plant. Remember those suckers I was telling you about? <laughs> well, this is gonna lead us to pruning. And when you're growing an indeterminate style plant, pruning is gonna be your friend. Not only is it gonna create some more airflow to limit pests at the base of your plant, it's also gonna keep it more manageable so it'll be easier for you to harvest. Let's take a look at this particular plant and I can show you what I mean. So this is the main stem and this is a normal branch and then this little guy in the crook is that sucker. So I want to make sure that when I'm pruning, I pinch off that sucker. Because if we don't pinch off that sucker, it'll do this. This used to be a sucker. <laughs> now it's like half the plant. So I'm gonna let that one go because I missed it and that was my bad. But I'm gonna be extra careful to pinch off all those suckers from here on out. So if you see here, we already have a bloom cluster started in this particular plant, and they grow directly off the main stem. Another important tip is to label your plants. It's really good, so that way you're not like, oh, wait, is that a cherry tomato, a Roma tomato, a beefsteak, or an eggplant? I don't know, because I didn't label it. So label your plants. I may be speaking from experience. Another really important thing to do is to journal. And this is gonna be really helpful for you for next season. You want to try as many things as possible so that way you can give yourself a better success season to season. So you wanna know what plants did you plant? How did you plant them? What type of conditions were they in? What did best for them? What things bothered them? And how did you deal with it? All these notes, in a journal are really gonna help you get the most yield out of your garden. And that leads me to prevention of pests and diseases. One of my favorite ways to prevent pests and diseases is via companion planting. Some of the best plants that make great companion plants for tomatoes are carrots, dill, parsley, alliums, mints, and French marigold. So rust and mildew are one of the key problems for tomato plants, and this is often caused by excess moisture. That's why it's crucial to prune your plant to make sure there's plenty of airflow and to water your plant at the base rather the plant itself. Another problem that is really bad is the hornworm. This caterpillar will decimate your plant in a matter of minutes, it seems like. And one of the problems with them is they're really hard to locate because they became the same color as your plant. 
A trick to this, if you're tech savvy, is wait till nighttime and come out with a black light flashlight. Those hornworms will glow like crazy. A great way and an easy way to deal with hornworms is to simply remove them and smush the heck out of them. If that's too squeamish for you and you raise chickens, you can feed them through your chickens or however disposal method you wish, but you wanna keep them away from your tomato plants if you want a tomato plant at all. And that is it. Simply keep an eye on your plants, particularly the underside of your leaves. Make sure they have plenty of airflow and a steady amount of moisture, and you will have a bountiful crop of tomatoes grown in your very own containers. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on City Setting. If it's a determinant type, you can slim a Fill the bottom with roughly a third. Of One of the things I'm going to add is gypsum. And this is going to add, how do you spell it? Gypsum. Gypsum. And that is rock phosphate. Rock phosphate. Phosphate. There's a third item. <laughs> and this is rock phosphate.